Hi, welcome back to Linux. Today we're looking at Linux Mint 19.3. and This is going to be a fresh install of Linux Mint 19.3 on bare hardware. And uh, that's what we have right here in front of us. In fact, I'm using this new system to record this video. So this is a new system. I've simply installed it now. I've typed the username and I've created a password and I said auto log on. And I'm gonna bring up a couple of the settings that I made right at the beginning. First of all, I installed Kazam, which I'm using to record this video. And uh, I've also changed a few things on the command line. For instance, go ahead and changing the IF name so I get ETH0 instead of ENO1 or other interface names. A lot of times you might see that you'll boot a Linux system and it'll give you really strange interface names. And those interface names may be nice in a very obscure set where let's say you've got a server with 30 or 40 video, uh, I'm sorry, Ethernet cards in it and those cards were not detected in a standard order or the system's not set up where PCI falls in a standard order. And so it just brings them up and throws them up in any order. And you don't want that. You don't want ETH0 or the first interface being a different card every time you boot that system up. Uh, I've never experienced that with any of my servers or any of the workstations and the, the thousands that we have here um, that I've used. Uh, but some people say that may be an issue, so that's why they, they did that whole thing, is to avoid that. So I get rid of that because I do need, in my lab environment here, I've got uh, 24 physical boxes and about another 50 uh, virtual machines running over in a cloud compute cluster. I need all the inter interface names to be the same, so I go ahead and change these files. So I'm just going to record this here and say, hey, you need to make these changes. Uh, I'm going to disable IPv6. My network does not support it. I can't use it going out, so there's no reason to have it in the systems and to clutter it up for the students. Uh, I, the update grub just updates this file that I changed, the Etsy default grub. I install the NVIDIA drivers, and I'll do that. I'll show you where to get those. I have also changed the Etsy sudoers file to allow me to sudo without a password, and I've uh, changed the password feedback to comment out the password feedback. We'll look at that really fast and uh, get started with our real main configuration today. The main config is you've just installed Linux Mint. This is your desktop. What do you do now? Well, the very first thing that we do once we install Linux Mint, and for the other settings there, I will go through and, and I'll show you those settings once uh, in another video where we go through and, and look at that. So when we go through and set up Linux Mint, the first thing you come up with is a welcome screen. So that welcome screen pops up here. It says, welcome to Linux Mint. It gives you first steps and it gives you an idea of system snap snapshots, which I am not using system snapshots in the system. I do backup the systems and I use rsync and I use tar for my backups there. Uh, the driver manager, absolutely. I go to the driver manager and I install the NVIDIA drivers because I am using an NVIDIA card on here. Uh, so it's a, a thousand something, I don't know, 10, 1030, I think I'm, I'm running on this system. So when I run that one, I install that NVIDIA driver. This is especially important if you want to use any of the hacking utilities, if you want to use anything that cracks using a GPU, or if you want to watch video and you want to see that video come back in a nice, clear, um, really good frame rates, then you'll want to use your GPU for those kind of things. Um, or FFmpeg, let's say you're running FFmpeg you want to change the encoding of a video, it's great to be able to use that NVIDIA encoding NVE and C on FFmpeg to do your encoding. So yes, install the drivers, uh, whatever is in there, please go ahead and install those things, they're fantastic. And uh, I can show you the difference between not having it and having it on just a GL Mark II. Update manager, if you want to go through and run the update manager, that's great, you can set those things up. Uh, the biggest thing for me in this welcome screen is desktop layout. So the desktop layout right there, choose traditional. The modern interface is crippling. And so I don't want the modern interface to impede any of the work that we're doing on the desktop. It's um, the modern interface is one of those desktops that seems to have been really created for the maybe uh, an intro user or or to limit your capabilities on a desktop. You may just have one terminal open at a time and when you click terminal again, that's it. It's just gonna show you that terminal. Um, there are ways around it. Of course, you can go through several configuration steps to avoid that, but really just go down to traditional so you can see what you're running, where it's running, and you can get everything done. All right, so moving out of that right there, let's do a, uh, 
In fact, I'll show you in this video these few settings and then we'll come back in the next video and we'll do the base install. So these settings right here where I talk about Etsy default grub, what I'm gonna use is sudo vim Etsy default grub. When I get in there, I'm gonna make this change. So I'm just gonna press I for insert. I'm gonna make the change. After I make the change, then I'm gonna hit escape colon WQ to save. And then I'm gonna type that update grub. And oops, <laughs> I'm gonna run that as root. So we'll run that and get the uh, grub updated there. Next, the sudoers, I'm gonna go ahead and do a sudo VI. Let's do a vim again, Etsy sudoers. And down in Etsy sudoers here, you get the sudo all all no password. I'm adding that in just so I don't have to type my password every time. You may not want to change that. You may want the password to be there for a station that's in a public place or for something that maybe is shared amongst a few people and you don't want them to be popping over administrator rights at any given time. So there's that. And then these, this system in 19.3 there is a um, PW feedback file that's included on the system. I've just removed that, so there's nothing in it anymore. So if uh, we do sudo vi, that's out. And I took out the PW feedback, so I don't get any password feedback. So if I type sudo s, then it, it would not give me any kind of feedback when I type my password. All right, so there you go. Intro to Linux Mint. I, sorry, I'm uh, gonna have to cut this one a little bit short. I'll pop the next one up and show you all the configurations that you need to make to get a functional system right away. Thanks for stopping by.